quite now event, and uh, I'm doing this interview with um, Chris Kalstedt of Thomson Reuters. Um, Chris, how are you? Can I'm you introduce a little bit of uh, yourself and just tell, tell us what you do at uh, Thomson Reuters? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I'm fantastic, so thank you for asking. Uh, yes, it's quite warm here in Orlando, but we're having a great time. Uh, here in, the, in this wonderful city. My name is Chris Carlstead, as Albert pointed out. I'm a managing director for OneSource, which is a tax platform for Thomson Reuters. Uh, and basically, OneSource provides a breadth of tax applications uh, for the corporate tax department around the world, um, from the beginning of a transaction's journey all the way to the time it finds itself on a compliance return for governments. Wonderful. Well, our topic today is tax and compliance. And we all know that it's a very, very weighty questions here. Um, what I would like to do is that, Chris, can you give me a kind of a whole landscape of, of the whole compliance area and where your key, uh, your role and your, your business fits into this? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, what's a, a most common misconception is that tax for businesses is probably the most, if not one of the most significant expenses that a company will pay throughout the given year. Mm -hmm. uh, and historically, we've always kind of underplayed it because it felt like an obligation, something you didn't really control. Uh, but as time has moved on and as we move forward with technology, it's enabled governments to get very aggressive with how they go after collecting that tax, mm -hmm. putting more burden on the taxpayer or the corporations in this case to be able to comply. And then to add to that burden, it changes all the time. So keeping pace with that change and actually bringing forth technology to help keep pace with that change is becoming more and more of a trend. Exactly. Um, what about, because when we you know, really try to analyze the whole uh, tax, and com uh, tax and compliance areas, often we, we often associated with, with paperwork and a lot of mm -hmm. you know manual processes. How do these you know new technologies, you know the latest digitization of the tax function, really are changing the way ent enterprises you know re do re tax reporting and, and compliance? Well, you're absolutely right, Albert. That's exactly how taxes have been done for mm -hmm. as long as I can remember, surely since I've been in my career. But there is a change afoot. Uh, and to be fair, there has always been leaders in the tax department who have been driving new frontiers and creating change. I think what's different now, though, is that they're actually getting pulled forward. We still will always have the leaders, but now we have people that are being pulled into technology. And there's really two trends that are driving that. First, the digitization mm -hmm. um, of the customer, if you will. Mm -hmm. So all, all companies are talking about how do we digitize and how do we uh, focus in on the customer. And I think what's interesting is that the customer is not just who we sell to. The customer could be your internal stakeholder. The customer, in the case of tax, can be the government. And how do we better use technology to ensure that our customers are getting what they need? And then secondly, the other major trend is the government themselves. Uh, because of the evolving technologies, they too have access to these technologies just like we do as, as consumers and corporations. And they're leveraging that technology to get to better collection of tax. Well, that's uh, kind of uh, what our research is, uh, is telling us as well. The whole e-government um, phenomenon is just, you know, really spreading right. like, like wildfire. Um, on, the, on the tax collection side, you know, a lot of government agencies would invest in new technologies mm -hmm. to make that happen because, A, it's, it's revenue-generating type of activities that they, they need, definitely need more, to do a lot more. Do you think that you know, the, the governments, you know, despite the fact that many of these government agencies have been running legacy systems, do you think that they're well equipped to handle you know, this tremendous amount of, of new things going on and, and, and perhaps you know, uh, working in close concert with, with the, the private sector? I do, and it's not a secret that governments have the deepest pockets around the world mm -hmm. and bigger than most of the largest corporations, and they're going to leverage that ability to advance themselves quickly. And you, you can look around the world to see examples where it's already happened. So in Brazil, they've gone to a fully automated transaction system where quite literally every invoice gets checked by the government before it gets sent to the supplier. And equally so, when the buyer gets that invoice, it equally goes to the government and gets checked. Uh, you look into Italy, they're now going to mandatory automated uh, transactions that also are getting checked by the government. Mm -hmm. Then you've got regulations like SAFTI and SII that are uh, permeating throughout Europe where it's more of a real-time check with the government where you're supplying your transactional data to ensure that you're complying with tax. So governments are absolutely getting more sophisticated. And even as we look around for forums and look forward to different technologies like blockchain, you walk into a, a forum on blockchain, you'll find a good percentage of the room is, in fact, government officials, ministries of finance, tax treasurers, trying to figure out how to leverage this technology. And I think one of the biggest reasons why is there's, there's a lot of tax on the table. In Europe, it's been stated that as much as $150 billion 
of unrecovered wow. VAT exists. Yep. And had they had better technology, they'd be able to collect that, that, those proceeds. That's tremendous. Now, the, going back to the private sector, because you know, when we really track these you know, companies and how they automate different functions, mm -hmm. one of the ways for them to better leverage you know, the tax reporting or the compliance type of, uh, of technologies is that it allows them to do better planning, connected mm -hmm. planning, mm -hmm. and, and doing it pretty much across the whole organization. Yeah. What's your take on something like this? Do you think that your tools or your approach will help companies facilitate that, the level of collaborations and, and doing better planning in the long run? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, one of the partnerships we're working on right now with SAP is to leverage Leonardo and their mm -hmm. data analytics to do just that. Uh, but to get to some specifics, as I mentioned before, that the customer can be many different things. And so let's look at a company. Today, uh, the customer can be the supplier or it could be procurement to the tax department. And the customer in that case, they're looking for better, more accurate tax. They want to get it right too, because as I mentioned, on every single transaction, there's a tax impact. So if you don't get that right the first time, that creates challenges with your suppliers or disc uh, unfortunate discord with your, your business. Mm -hmm. So by getting tax right on the very beginning, you can make it more efficient. You can make that experience with the supplier better. In an e-commerce situation, it's the difference between a customer opting out of buying something on Amazon or otherwise versus going forward if they don't get tax right away. So by providing that positive experience, it's no longer just simply a avoid penalties and fines, which is typically the way we would convince tax departments to get on board with technology. Mm -hmm. Now it's about you can actually improve your top line and ultimately through efficiency improve your bottom line. Yeah. So it's a real positive message. Uh, you still should avoid those penalties and interest. Though. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, and that's you know, something I learned is that we're really talking about turning you know, tax reporting into a yeah. better experience, you know, whether from a user po point of view or yeah. from a reporting point of view, that's extremely important because right. now with this new generation of workers, people really want to simplify all these things. So is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And as I was mentioning in, the, in that partnership, what we're really looking to do is to leverage some new technologies like machine learning uh, to tr track that journey, use historical data, and actually mine different information resources that, that one source offers to get real-time adjustments to your tax policy mm -hmm. so that you can proactively manage your business which is a total change uh, in the landscape for what businesses will be able to do with tax data. Wonderful. So um, in conclusion, so what can we expect you know, from Thomson Reuters going forward? Um, can you give us a, maybe a, a glimpse of what the future is going to look like? It's all about platforms and partnering. And we're really excited to work with SAP and, and further that relationship because the customer ultimately wants mm -hmm. a singular experience. They don't care behind the scenes how that happens. Uh, and so through partnerships like with the one that we're uh, very excited about with SAP, we'll allow the customer to experience their, their SAP experience. And in the background, we'll continue to supply tax information to make that experience seamless and also to get customers what they want, which is get tax right the first time. Well, thank you very much for your insight, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.